for my scripture. I'm just going to stay in the Beatitudes for, at least for today, since I already wrote the sermon on it. I hate to change it now. Today I want to talk about the meek. I'm not going in any kind of order. We've talked about blessed, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Last Sunday, I talked about you being a peacemaker. Anybody become a peacemaker? <laughs> Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. This morning, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. That's what I'm going to talk about here for just a few minutes. Do we have anyone here who is meek? Oh, Virginia Brand, we got one. (laughs) Amanda really laughed at that. (laughs) Meek. I looked up the word. I looked up the word in the dictionary, and, um, well, I mean, on my phone. We don't use dictionaries anymore. Um, I Googled it, and it said, the definition for meekness is gentle, submissive, and quiet. (laughs) Gentle, submissive, and quiet. Ah, uh, Virginia, I'm going to argue on that one with you. That's over for three. <laughs> <That's over. laughs> has anyone ever prayed, Lord, make me meek? Has, that, has anyone ever prayed, Lord, give me meekness, change me into a meek person? Anybody? No? Do you think you will after I get done preaching this? Such ne- I feel such negativity this morning coming from the crowd. Is it the storm? Is it the rain? Well, I'm going to teach you today what Jesus meant about meekness, okay? Now, I don't know if you'll believe this or not, but years ago when I was a kid, I would have been described as meek. I was very quiet. Can you believe this? When I was a kid, I was very shy. You, had to pull, you almost had to pull words out of me. Conversations were one sided. I'd go, I'd be like, yeah, no, yeah. I was very quiet, never raised my hand in class. That's because I was dumb. Uh, it wasn't because I was meek, but, and uh, I can remember when I was in fifth grade, me and four other of my good buddies, we were blamed for something we didn't do. We really didn't do it. And we got called to the principal's office, and they're all giving their testimony. And you know what I did? I cried. <laughs> and it got me out of it, but I didn't. <laughs> but I was very, I would have been called meek, okay? Quiet, submissive. Uh, but today, let's try to be meek, okay? Let, let's, you ready for this? Let me, let me give you a new definition for meekness that maybe this will help, okay? Let me give you some new definitions. Number one, remember this, meekness is not weakness, Meekness is not weakness. You know what meekness is? I'm going to give you a new definition for it. You ready? It is strength under control. Meekness is strength under control. That even though you can do something, you don't. Even though you can say something, you choose not to. Even though you can retaliate, you choose not to. It is, there's your new definition for meekness. It is strength under control. Jesus taught a very difficult thing, didn't he? When he said this, he said, if someone slaps you on the right cheek, render them the other. That's difficult, isn't it? Now, let me ask you this question. I'm going to get scientific here. How many, how many left-handers do we have in church? Wow, more than I thought. Most of you are right-handed, right? Are you both? Sometimes people can be ambidextrous. Um, so let's, let's do, we live in, and Joe says this all the time, we live in a right-handed world. We do. We do. Yeah. So, so, 
So if you're going to slap, so if most of the world is right-handed and you're going to slap someone on their right cheek, how are you going to do it? Moe's right. Backhanded. I'm not going to hit Linda. She's one of my favorite people in the world. (laughs) But if I'm right-handed and I'm going to hit Linda on the right cheek, it's a backhanded slap. What does that mean? It means more of an insult. It's a slap. It's a it's a it's it's more of an insult. You slap them with your right hand. It's not really to fight or anything. It's it's an insult. And, and how many times have we said that? Oh, that's a slap in the face. When we're when somebody says something or does something, what do we say? Oh my goodness, what a what a slap in the face. So I think what Jesus is talking about here, he's not talking so much about being physically slapped. He's talking about words. He's talking about insults. He's talking about people putting you down. I don't think he's talking about being hit here. I think he's talking more about about verbal things. Um, Now, one thing I have learned working when I worked in the construction business for years is that when, when they find out, when your coworkers find out something bothers you, what do they do? They pile it on even more. So, so in other words, yeah, when they find out something bothers you in life, oh my goodness, they never let it go. They just keep hounding you day after day after day after day. And, and here, you know what the best, and I think what Jesus is trying to teach us here is when someone insults you like that or hurts you, what he's trying to teach you is the best response is no response. Don't feed that. Don't, don't give them any more ammunition than they already have. And, and you know what I thought of? Because I'm, you know, I'm 52 years old. I watched TV when it was good. Um, like years ago, (laughs) I'm just going to put on pause for a second. I think he's sleeping. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> You're fine. You know what it reminded me of? Not that, but you know what it reminded me of? They're fine. That's no problem. Um, watching TV years ago, Archie and George Jefferson. Back and forth, right? Or even more famously, Fred Sanford and Aunt Esther. Remember? Back and forth. He'd call her ugly, she'd call him a heathen, remember? Back and forth, back and forth. And what, I think what Jesus is trying to teach us here is he's saying, you know what? When you, when you retaliate, you're giving them ammunition. And what he's trying to teach us is, he's trying to say, you know what? You're too good for that. You belong to me. Act, act like it. Act like somebody. And, and, but, but I will say this, I don't think he's talking about when we just as friends just kid each other around. Like my good friend Dave in the back there. Dave is one of those people that I preached about last Sunday. He will never admit when he's wrong. He will never admit it. And we even text each other back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, and you know, and the problem is, is that I'm right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think Jesus is teaching us here to act like you belong to him. Now, number two, here's a word nobody likes. Meekness is being submissive. Okay, that's a word we don't use a lot, right? I was supposed to, I was helping with a wedding a few years ago. And the minister was a lady minister, and she did not want me to help do the service because she was afraid I'd get up there and tell the bride she had to submit to her husband. I said, are you crazy? Do you think I'd really say something like that? Well, let me ask you this question. Okay, wives, we got a bunch of them out here. How many of you are submissive to your husbands? That is a zero. Virginia, don't you dare raise your hand again. We're not believing a word you're saying. Anybody, any wife out there submissive? Okay, let me ask this. How many husbands are you submissive to your wife? <laughs> now the hands are going up. <laughs> now the hands are going. You got two hands up. <laughs> <laughs> 
Everybody talks about the wife submitting to the husband, but when I, when I hear a lot of you speak, it tends to be the other way around. The husband does whatever the wife tells him to do. Isn't that true? You know, like, like for instance, like, like Laura, I, it, this is the one thing we disagree on. I love Jimmy Swaggart. I could watch Jimmy Swaggart 24 hours a day. She does not like Jimmy Swaggart because she said he looks like Terry Bradshaw and she can't stand Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> so whenever Laura leaves the room, I turn on Jimmy Swaggart. As soon as she gets up, I turn on Jimmy. I did it again this morning. She goes, I'm going to get I'm going to get ready for church. I turn Jimmy Swaggart on because she doesn't like watching him because I submit to her because she does not like Jimmy Swaggart. I won't put her through watching it. That's a good husband, isn't it? Because really, how many husbands, when the wives leave the room, they're turned on football or Baywatch, right? <laughs> I turn on Jimmy Swaggart, because I love that guy. Okay, so there's about 100 of you here this morning. No wives submit. Okay, that's fine. Don't worry about it. You're fine. Spiritually speaking, to be meek means to submit. Okay, and, and here's where he's telling you, he's telling you spiritual now. In other words, if there's something I want to do, but God says I shouldn't do it, I, sub, I should, well, so should you, we, sub, we should submit to God's way. Okay, in other words, there's something I really want to do, and, but the Bible's very black and white and clear, I shouldn't do it. We should submit to God's word, okay? Or God's will. I know a lot of people say, I'll give you a little, I'm going to give you a little phrase here. A lot of people say, well, what is God's will? Okay, here's, here's, a, little, here's a little phrase for you. God's will is God's word. And God's word is God's will. So if you want to know what God's will is, you've got to read the word, you've got to study the word, you've got to hear the word being preached, okay? So in other words, meekness, meekness is submitting to God and whatever God wants, we submit to him, even though we may not want to do it, even though it may not feel good to do it, even though we really don't want to do it, we should submit to, to God. And because and, uh, and we really do it all the time. If you've ever worked a job, you have submitted to your boss, right? I mean, you don't want to do it. You're not in the mood to do it. And, and I, uh, Nanette's not here, is she? The first, the first day I ever met Nanette Gross, she's not here today. She just sits in the back there. Um, I was a landscaper, and, and we were notorious. We did any small job, and we went to her house, and she needed her gutters cleaned out. And my landscaping buddy, Steve Limestall, was afraid of heights. So guess who's going up on the ladder to clean gutters out? Way up. And Steve decides, well, you remember how cheap Steve was? Steve gets this rickety old wooden ladder that looks like it's uh, like Benjamin Franklin used it at some point in his life. And, and he's got the ladder propped up there, and I'm up the ladder, and I got my little bucket, and I'm cleaning out the gutters. Also, Nanette Gross comes out, and, and she and Steve love talking to each other. All of a sudden, they're off somewhere talking, and no one's holding the ladder. <laughs> but I submitted because I knew Steve was my boss, and I needed the money. Um, I submitted to his will because I knew, I knew he didn't like it, okay? So I submitted, and, and we, do this, we do this all the time. We, we submit to what God wants. Do, do you ever really feel like forgiving people? But yet God says you got to. You got to. Or, you know, so, you know wouldn't it be nice to, I'll use an Old Testament word, wouldn't it be nice to smite your enemies? And what did God say? pray for your enemies. In other words, we, we submit, we submit because it's actually in the long run, it's best for us. Now, this last one I want to talk about is being meek means being teachable. Are you teachable? That's a good question. We all have pet peeves in life, don't we? There's, we all have these pet peeves. You know, one of my pet peeves is, can I tell you, it's being around know-it-alls. It's being around know-it-alls. I've been around folks, got an old friend, he did the same thing. Whatever the subject was, whatever the topic was, he knew everything. Whatever you brought up, he knew all the answers. And, and here's, a, here's a term, that another one of my pet peeves. You ready for this one? 
unsolicited advice. People just give you people just give you all kinds of advice. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> um, unsolicited advice, all these things. So I, I'm going to give you a couple things here to make you teachable. Okay, I'm going to give you four quick things right here to be teachable. Number one is we are taught to to work on our strengths. But what we also need to do is we need to be aware of our weaknesses. What are our weaknesses? What makes us weak? Remember David and Goliath? David had on that fancy, or Goliath had on that fancy helmet. He only had about this much room for that rock to go through. And that's exactly where David sent it. Right there. We need to be aware of our weaknesses. Number two, sometimes we have to, okay, the, the, the women are okay on this, but men, you ready for this, men? We need to sometimes ask for help. We don't like doing that, do we? Is there any man in this church that likes asking for directions? <laughs> you know what's really bad? And this is going to sound a little sexist, but I'm going to say it anyway. You know what's the worst thing for men is? When they're lost and they have to ask for directions, and the only person that knows is a woman. <laughs> that really hurts that really hurts the ego, doesn't it? I've I've known men that won't even listen to GPSs. They'll be like, I ain't listening to that thing. <laughs> Not gonna listen to Siri. What does she know? Sometimes to be teachable, we have to ask for help. Number three, sometimes we have to accept the fact that someone's idea might be better than yours. Sometimes you've got to realize, sometimes somebody else's idea is, has to be better than yours. It is so cool that Marvin Rodemick is in church today because Marvin was one of the best bosses I ever had. And he and I both worked for Norwin Hymos. And Norwin was a notorious micromanager. And it was so funny because, because when you worked for him, even if his ideas were terrible, you had to do them anyway. Even if it was ridiculous and it wasn't, wasn't going to work and it was going to take a lot longer, he owned the place. And you know what I learned as, as I worked for him? You know what I found out? If you could trick him into thinking it was his idea, <laughs> if, you could, if you could talk him into saying, oh, yeah, I, Norman, I think you thought of that, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Go ahead and do it that way. If you, could, if you could trick him into thinking his, my idea, which was good, was his idea, he'd let you do it. To be teachable, sometimes we have to realize somebody else had a better idea. And the last one is this. We have to learn, and I think this is where God helps us, teachable moments. We have to be aware when God gives us teachable moments. When you're in a situation, you have to realize, you know what? God's trying to teach me something right here and right now. And I have to be submissive and I have to be meek to allow him to teach me that. My famous one, I was in the South County Walmart. I don't know why I keep going back there, but I was in line. I had a lot of, I had a lot of food in my cart and, and there, was a, there was a line. So I got in the line and the, and the lady in front of me had... A lot of food. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to stay in this line because it's going to teach me patience. What I didn't realize, the lady in front of me had two carts full of food. Two carts full of food. She was pulling one and she was pushing one. So I thought, this is, this is, the, this is my line. This is where I'm supposed to be because God's going to teach me patience. And it took 20 minutes to get all that food out of that cart and into bags. And then the bags had to go back into the cart. And I'm just standing there with a smile on my face because I know God's trying to teach me something. And when you know it, some guy, some older gentleman comes up behind me with one item and looks at me. And you know what I said? God's trying to teach you something too. <laughs> You're, you're not going in front of me. God's trying to teach you something too. Get in line. <laughs> I'm serious. He did not go in front of me because he needed to be taught. 
patience as well. <laughs> now who wants to be meek? I don't have one taker yet. Let's pray. <laughs> I give up. Let's pray. Father, it's an odd thing to pray for meekness. It's, it's a strange thing to pray for because the world really teaches us to be assertive and to be uh, outgoing and, and push yourself and brag about yourself and, you know, all these things. And Jesus turns around and says, no, but you know what? Blessed are the meek. So, Father, help us to be teachable. Help us to, uh, to listen. Help us to, when we realize we're in a teachable moment, allow ourselves to be teachable and to listen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.